When I was in school, I was the cool geek. I mean, I used to sit at the back of the class with the naughty ones, but all my grades were 90% or more. And I used to not share my grades or achievement with the rest of the class because I thought it would affect my coolness and popularity. But we used to have a really bad maths teacher in the class. She used to come, talks for 10 minutes, then leaving us lost in the lesson and the exam was approaching and we got so frustrated and so desperate to get good grades. So this teacher caused a lot of distress in the class. We complained to the head teacher, we said to her, oh, please change this maths teacher for us. We want to get good grades. And unfortunately, the situation did not improve at all. I could not stand still and watch. I wanted to make a change. I got very, very angry. So I started to think about solution. And the first solution came to my mind was so typical. I thought, let me do a petition, collect signatures from my classmates, then submit them to the head teacher, then maybe she can change the maths teacher. <laughs> what happened is uh, that I failed. I failed miserably because most of my classmates, they did not even have the courage to sign the petitions, although they were the sufferers, they were, they were the ones who faced injustices, but they remained in the apathy and they were passive. I did not give up, absolutely did not give up. I went to my naughty friends at the back of my class and I told them, look, and I trusted them, we need to make something. And although they were not, uh, they were careless about the exam maths, the maths exam, they were looking for some sort of adventure. And I knew that was their self-interest, so I mobilized them. I tell them, look, whenever we have this maths teacher, let's go to the class next door that had a better teacher. And we study there and then come back. And because each class has a limited capacity, that was against the rules. And my like-minded, rebellious friends absolutely loved the idea. So every math session, we'll just go to the next door class, study there, then come back. And I get a good grades by the end of it. And the rest of my classmates, they knew about my grade through, so they started to copy me every math lesson. It was actually really funny seeing the teacher only teaching three students in the front row because most of us had disappeared to the one next door. I told you this story about my maths teacher and I can tell you more stories like it. But at that moment, I could not figure out for the life of me, why would a group of people who suffered injustice not do anything about it? Why would they talk, complain and even cry? But yet these sentiments don't lead them to take action. Why are they so scared and fearful of the consequences? Consequences that most of the time are only illusions that imprison them within invisible walls. You know, we are all individuals living in a world that has become a small village because of the internet and the social media. The influx of information coming from across the world is overwhelming, making us witness so many injustices taking place across the world. Poverty, homelessness, environmental destruction, militarism, conflicts, Islamophobia, and even the mass killing of dolphins and whales. These are all injustices, but also motivate us to strive against them. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, as Martin Luther King once said. But before that, we have to know something. The Quran says, our Lord will not change the conditions of a people until they change <coughs> what is in themselves. Meaning if we are as individuals acting morally in our daily life, helping to relieve the suffering or the immediate suffering of the others and not being like my classmates, then you can make or we can start to make the change. The question is how changing yourself is connected to changing the world. Because your individual internal conscience, if it's strong enough, 
will eventually awaken your social conscience and will move you beyond your personal and individual interaction to a wider desire to contribute for a more ethical society. It will compel you to insist on a moral action from the institution of the society. Be the change you want to see, as Gandhi said. But don't tell me that I cannot be part of any change. Because the norm of our society are the collective values and priorities. As society shapes us, we can also shape society. No matter how society is diverse, no matter the differences in our color, faith, background, dress code and looks, we can find common goals and values as a human being and work together to make a, a change or movements for change. And don't tell me, you know, I'm just a useless person and I cannot be part of any change because I say all of us with no exception can make more conscious choices to shape the society according to the universal values of love, freedom and justice. But the question is, how? You know, my grandmother used to live in a very small village and I used to admire her so much. She's loving, humble and wise. She taught me many things through the methodology of andragogy, which means the art and the science of teaching adults to learn. And one of its main tools is reflection. And it's opposite to pedagogy, which is based on giving instruction or nursing knowledge. Now, I used to visit my grandmother every summer. And one day, she woke me up at dawn and she gave me this. She gave me a shepherd's stick, because she used to be a shepherd. <laughs> and she gave me a straw hat that she made herself and a bottle of water and dates, because she used to be a shepherd. And she said to me, Saha, can you see these shepherds? Go and shepherd them. <laughs> At that moment, I could not believe what she said to me. It was so much because I came from a city where I lived a luxurious life. And now I have to be like my grandmother, shepherd shepherding few goats. It was really difficult. But because I love my grandmother so much, I could not say no to her, not even thinking about it. So I held the shepherd's stick and I took the straw hat and a bottle of water and with a few dates and I went with these goats. And because I was on my own and I could not find anyone to help me or guide me, I learned a lot of things through the method of reflection. And I learned three life changing lessons. And listen to this. Lesson number one, I realized that each of these goat is actually different in color, in gender, in size, and in character. But my role was to unite them all, regardless the differences. Sometimes from the front, and other times from the back, but mostly by the side, around the middle of the struggling line, as if I was one of them. What I learned was that unity does not mean uniformity. And unity and cohesiveness cannot be achieved by my efforts alone, but also by eliciting the contribution and the willing cooperation of all. And lesson number two, I realize that each of these goat has its own self-interest and need. One of them, for example, would be just interested in chasing in search for a willing mate, okay? And another goat would be just looking for a specific type of a plant that I have to secure myself. The same is true in community organizing where I work with Citizen UK. 
My role is about serving everyone according to their individual needs. It is not about my own personal agenda or self-interest, but it is also about the shared self-interest and the common goal and common good of the community and the society and the institutions. Lesson number three. I spent the entire day with these goats in the most difficult conditions of hot weather and limited water and food. But regardless the difference, regardless the difficulties, I strove tirelessly to make sure that I feed them and return them back safely to my grandmother. And what I learned was that each of us must have a short and a long-term goals. But most importantly, you must have a vision. You must have a vision that you strive to achieve regardless, okay, the difficulties or the limited resources you have. It is actually no surprise to me that some of the history's greatest leaders were actually shepherds at one point of their lives. Let me give you examples. Moses, Joseph, King David, and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. Jesus used the shepherd metaphor many times. Yes, they were all shepherds of low social status, but with a great vision. They had a stick in one hand and a message in the other, and they all contributed to our human thought and civilization, civilizations, regardless of the difficulties that they faced. So in a world in the brink of collapse, none of us can transform everything, but each of us can transform something. If we just focus on our common values, if we just focus on our efforts and try to improve our understanding of the efforts of others rather than getting caught up in disputes and conflicts, then you can make the change. And don't tell me that, don't think that only politicians who can make the change. Because I believe the most effective and sustainable methodology of change is the bottom up rather than top down approach. So we really need to be more like shepherds, focusing on the unity and the aims and the vision that we strive tirelessly to achieve no matter the difficulties or the limited resources. So before I end or leave, let me leave you with few calls for action. Action. Number one, find a cause that you are passionate about and learn it inside out. Number two, follow up your knowledge by action before it's too late. And number three, make sure that you thirst for knowledge and the follow up of action consistent. Remember the best of deeds are those little, even if they were, sorry, the best of deeds are those consistent, even if they were little. San Davids from Wales, where I am from, he said, do the little things. So I wish you the courage to take a consistent action to make our world a better place. And in your journey, think of what or who is your stick that you lean on? What is your straw hat that protects you? And what are your, your water and your dates that sustain you? physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. It seemed to be one shepherd is powerless, but many shepherds working together to make our world as it is a little bit closer to the world as it should be, we can make it all. So thank you very much. Thank you.